Well, YouTube, this is what I've been doing with my evenings instead of putting out a few videos. Also, this is our scrap, the sprinkler. It's not complete. This is just a pull test to see how much torque it has. That's one of those, uh, in the background there is a Magnum irrigator. And uh, that's where that stalled. And I actually put this one, plugged this one into the same hose and started pulling it. Right now it's in its fastest gear. And the reason I've got this geared down so much is I wanted this to be a torque monster where this rotor was going to consistently overcome anything it put up to it. I'm starting to think my math was faulty because it should be only putting out 2,000 pounds of force. But the way it's pulling itself so steadily, I think it's quite in excess of that. So I obviously screwed up my math somewhere, but that's okay. That's a good type of screw up. The other sprinkler isn't shooting so far because I got this huge nozzle on this side and um, I didn't back off the uh, screw on it, so it's actually atomizing that screen kind of early over there. So I'm not even running at the same pressure as what the Magnum was operating under. And the back here is just the packing housing on the uh, that I built for the uh, chain drive on the main rotor. Tracked more transmission right there. And uh, something like, uh, now I can't remember off the top of my head, I have to look at my paperwork, but it comes up to like a 40 to 1 reduction for what this spins up here. And uh, yeah, quite impressed. I don't know if you can see that screw now on that sprinkler, but it's uh, halfway into the stream right now. <laughs> it's just great to cut this range, but uh, oh, here, let's watch this just slowly creep here. You can see it's just inching its way ahead, and that's the fastest gear. Those booms up higher, right up here. Those are uh, where I'm going to attach these large booms where those sprinklers are going to attach. So that's why I'm going over a real wide swath with slow movement. And it's just like I said, basic cable pull here. That trailer axle scrap. The only thing not scrap on this is just that channel that looks nice and new on it. But the rest of it, I just, this is scrap over machinery I've repaired over the years, bearings. <laughs> That's actually what's on the front there, is a, that uh, guides the cable is just an old bearing cup. And those old trailer axles got for nothing. Same with the tractor mower transmission got for nothing. The sprockets are new, the bearings are new, but the bearings were the cheapest ones I could find online. And they are soft metal too. I mean, I could ding them around with hammer, a uh, hammer when I put them on, so. It, it, mostly I did this because I'm really curious of how well this is going to last and where the major stress point is. So I used a lot of subpar parts in the prototype here just to see how it goes. But so far so good. I think this is going to out pull that Magnum. We'll give it a bit here. And as, as soon as it pulls past that Magnum, I know it's uh, got plenty of pulling power for what I plan to do with it. And right now it's actually dead pulling 500 feet of two and a half inch hose. And it's not straight pulling it either. It actually angles out there. I don't know if you can see it now. No, it's not coming up here. At least I can't see it. And that nozzle that's spraying out this side is about an inch or an inch and a half. I can't remember. I drilled it really big because I didn't want high pressure. I wanted to uh, study how this would work. here you can see it's only been running maybe five minutes I'd say before I started this video so total of maybe eight nine minutes how about you dad but I'm pretty impressed with it yeah <laughs> it's got plenty of pull power I was going slower than the other one in fifth gear yeah well that's what I want the other one moved too fast it's hard to get a good soak on everything. And also what I did different on this, uh, with the Williams there, is they use like a cam system and it kind of hammers using this momentum to ratchet itself forward. It had double ratchet. I modified it to a single ratchet on that Magnum to slow it down, which put it close to about what I needed to. And then I modified the stop so it only ratcheted one tooth instead of two teeth on the uh, ratchet call system. And that's what I wanted to get away from because I kept having springs break on it. And this one, just, like I said, is just straight 
raw torque. I also am letting that belt get wet because I want to see how much torque is going through there if it'll slip when it's wet. And right now it is soaking wet. And it is, so far isn't slipping and I've just got a light spring that was off of a piece of exercise weight. <laughs> Keeping tension on that belt. Here, I'll walk around so you guys see the front. I'm also pulling through this tall crest of wheatgrass. This is uh, about four feet tall here. I also built out a ridiculously thin metal tube. Again, it's something I wanted to see where this frame would break or bend at. I can see I'm getting a little U right there. I'm not sure if that's related to how hard this is pulling this hose here or what's going on. I think it's related to the hose because that's which way it would divert it. So. But again, that's why I did it then. I really wanted to see where the stress was on this. So I can actually add verts down to drive that force back into the frame. So I'm just shocked that packing housing is actually putting up with it because this is still a substantial amount of pressure it's holding. Yeah, it's already out pulled the magnum. This is right where the magnum stopped. See the nozzle. Look at that, it's already half a length. It's not a bad sprinkler, don't get me wrong. This Williams sprinkler isn't a bad sprinkler. It's just that's why I wanted to build my own sprinkler, is some of the downfalls I didn't like of it. So I wanted to build something that worked the way I wanted it to work. And I wanted a more consistent speed. This sucker, every time I'd get uh, toward the end of a 250 foot run or a 500 foot run it would start to uh, slow down drastically and then I'd get really heavy soaks and then at the start it wasn't given enough but uh, hopefully this will alleviate. Like I said that's last year on that. So. <laughs> See that hose going way out in the distance there. Pressure will up as soon as I put the other sprinkler on. So I'm gonna actually shrink these nozzles down here. So I'm starting to think they might be excessive. They aren't very big. They're only quarter inch up there. And I put two because I wanted a balanced load because I was going faster turning up here. Same with the pipe up there too. I forgot to mention that was all scrap. I found that buried in some mud. Uh, my dad had some years ago and a flood uh, went and buried it under sand and gravel and well I decided to take it out and wire wheel and grind off all the rust so <laughs> well you look at that beam flex in the middle there you see there where right there where it's pulling no, I don't notice it yeah come here I'll show you right there between my two booms Oh, the A-frame, yeah. You know, though, that might work out because when I put those booms on, they're going to want to pull up on that, and that might actually be a good structure balance there, where its its own force is strengthening itself there. Sure is much quieter than the other one. Yeah, because you don't got the ka-clonk as the cam hits, and ch ch clonk <laughs> I'm surprised that bell isn't slipping, aren't you? I, I was curious about that, but... The chain ain't popping. That's what I think I said. I put like number 30 chain, real scrawny mm -hmm. stuff. It's already moved quite a bit. Yeah, it's already pulled it far in the other one, so we know it's got more torque than that one already. This was the biggest thing, is I wanted to know if this would have the power to pull. That was one thing, you know, one thing on paper you can say, hey, it puts out 2,000 pounds of force, foot-pounds of force. 
but once you get out there you might discover there was a lot of other parasitic losses you didn't even think about calculating for. Um, I know where I food up one part of the math is I didn't count the uh, cable spool there properly. That's 2,000 pounds at one foot so I'd have to be 12 inches from the center and I'm not 12 inches from Sarah. I'd say at most I'm 8 inches so there's already going to be some extra torque obtained through that. Ball bearings up there, nice uh, pipe on top. I'm trying to go with more of a modular design because I want this to be something I plan to produce this for other people depending on how I like this and as maybe a cheaper and alternative to some of their stuff I plan to design it with some more modular parts uh, in the sense that if that main shaft wears out because maybe a bearing jams you can just replace it with a piece of pipe and you're good to go and the bearings there are going to be a standard size that can just be replaced with any bearing that fits I don't plan to do anything too special with it uh, so the only real special things are going to be, you know, the weld frame. I plan to make a, uh, or have a uh, plastic cover fabbed up so none of the water gets on the transmission and on the internal gearing. And those sprockets over there, I might switch to just a sealed gearbox. Just so nothing, you know, gets uh, exposed to the elements and lasts a lot longer. It's already pulled the whole leg here. Nice. Oh, you, I think the test is a success. You want to just shut her down now? <laughs> it's already pulled far in that one, and we haven't broke it, and I don't plan to have this designed to pull past 500 feet because we know what happens when you go past that. It breaks hose. All right, it should be shut off any minute. This here, I'm actually testing how much it'll um, glide backwards after it's shut off. I'm also going to put a locking brake on it that uh, should prevent that, but uh, I'm also just curious what we're going to see with everything locked up and the wire suddenly quits with a ton of tension on the cable. Holy crap. That thing's still got plenty of torque to give. See if it starts back spinning. Oh, there it starts to go. That's it. Wow. It's crazy. Give me an idea how big that hole is up here. screw was adjusted in the way of the stream. I shouldn't have done that, but whatever. Here's the packing house that I just kind of came up with. Again, uh, just scraps. That's pieces of muffler and bearing and pipe. Even some old broken discs off some farm equipment. What's crazy to me is how much this chain stretched. So that was snug. Now look at that. I kind of knew I'd have to use heavier duty chain, but again, if that chain failed, that would give me an idea of what force. So I can look up chain ratings and go, all right. Now this hose. I can actually stand on it. That's how tall it has got it. Let's see, she's in last year. Go ahead and put it in neutral and see if she'll spring back on me. Step aside here, just in case. So that cable tang a little, but it's because I kind of just reeled it with no tension. So, holy shit! All right, that's gonna have to be resigned. Don't expect that at all to hold that much force. I can't even back it out. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> wow. You can 
you see it's not much of a spring, but it worked. That's insane. That has a lot of force on it. Took out most of the U. Still got some. I think that'll give you an idea how hard that was hammering now. Jeez. Cool. Hope you enjoy this video.